so welcome everyone. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. This talk is um, delivered by uh, BC. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so if you want to take it. Yes, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to our presentation, the last ones. So thank you very much. And thanks to the people online as well for attending. Um, my name is Sandra Morales, and I'm a digital education advisor at Oxford University. And I'm here with my colleagues to um, talk about this presentation about new technologies and particularly the use of uh, virtual reality um, in medical sciences. So Shamila, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, uh, I'm Shamila. So I'm over in teaching uh, anatomy to the uh, medical science students. So uh, I'll be using the virtual reality uh, to the first year and third year medical uh, students. I'm gonna showcase some of the pilot study that we have done for the last few months, yes. Uh, and I'm Xavier, I'm working with uh, Sandra. I'm also a learning technologies advisor at the Center for Teaching and Learning. So as a way of introducing our talk, um, in uh, June uh, 2023, um, the Center for Teaching and Learning held a symposium in which Sharmila, our star academic, uh, won an award for best poster presenting her work using uh, virtual reality with medical students. So, so um, to, um, to, to, to kind of uh, develop uh, the field of immersive technology at the University of Oxford, uh, the Center for Teaching and Learning is working closely with uh, other departments, just as the IT service uh, department. And we've been doing, uh, I think, uh, immersive tech since 2017, uh, something like this, and, and I've been participating in this, uh, in this. And then basically what we do, we try to provide uh, support for teaching and learning, uh, small projects, uh, teaching, uh, and oh, sorry, and uh, yeah, supporting community building, building community support, and also uh, research uh, across many departments. So this is a very much an engagement is based on goodwill uh, between myself and other people who are kind of keen people to to try to promote this technology, and we try to find keen academics also or researchers to want to use this, uh, this type of technology. Uh, so, for example, over the many years uh, that we've been working with uh, uh, immersive tech, we produce. Uh, uh, so we've been working on, on uh, as I said, uh, research. Research. Uh, we've used photogrammetry. Uh, we've developed training courses. We've developed quite many uh, uh, conferences as well, and then we also use it as a, um, for teaching and learning in different fields, in, in classics, in medicines, in music, in history, uh, during tutorial, during seminars uh, with, you know, from two students to 10 students uh, at a time uh, in colleges or at the, in departments. So we have uh, already over the past maybe seven years, uh, a good experience of immersive technology and it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a technology that start to uh, develop well in the uh, in the university and people uh, are taking consideration of this thank you so in order to contextualize the work that we've been doing with it services and with academics uh, like sharmila um we're I'm going to discuss a little bit about the um, digital education strategy that has been placed in Oxford this year. This is the second time that the university comes up with a framework to um, promote the inclusion of uh, digital resources. And these are the um, four core principles of the digital education strategy in terms of foundations. Um, for instance, uh, there are projects that support the VLE that we use at Oxford, which is mainly Canvas. There are some departments that use Moodle, but the uh, university supports Canvas. Also inclusive teaching, that's uh, also very important um, in the university right now to cater for all our students and uh, the needs of the academics. Global reach in terms of online courses that um, we can uh, st start um, presenting uh, outside the university and partnerships outside the university. And the work that we've done in immersive technologies um, falls into the innovation um, 
principle of the digital education strategy. So it is a priority in a un our university at the moment. Um, also, in terms of inclusive teaching and the incorporation of technology, we have um, developed a digitally supported inclusive teaching toolkit based on the experiences of academics and students of the pandemic. So we want to um, take uh, learned, we have learned the lessons from the pandemic and continue to incorporate the resources that were useful for students. So, um, and create these guidelines to continue promoting the um, effective use of technology. So what does the toolkit have? Um, it has students' experiences. It has case studies. Uh, one of the case studies is from Sharmila as well. Um, so everyone can uh, access to this toolkit and um, see how they can integrate them into their teaching practices. Um, so in the future, we're um, looking at developing a similar toolkit, but for innovation and immersive uh, technologies like virtual re reality, augmented reality. So that's why um, we are uh, supporting academics like Sharmila to continue to do their work. Thank you, Zab, and thank you, Sandra. Do you, I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Right. So being, um, being an anatomist, I feel like the anatomy is the crucial component of the uh, medical education because uh, it lays a good foundation for throughout what they are learning, students learning here. Um, we, know, we know familiar of anatomy is like learning from the human donor bodies. So um, that's how the, the conventionally been taught through the uh, dissection or prosection. But as you see, like the, the, uh, the teaching anatomy has been evolved as such a way that it has been supplemented or enhanced or facilitated by a number of tools, like from low fidelity models to the high fidelity ends, like using the 3D printer models or uh, softwares or including immersive technologies. So um, why we have these kind of uh, evolution, why we need to adapt these kind of evolutions is that, so there are challenges still with the anatomy, but just uh, like uh, the students struggle with orientation with the structures, how it is uh, spatially located within the body. For example, to put it in a simple way, uh, how you view the aerial map from the top, that's how the body is. So if you zoom in, go down, get to the location, you see the roadmaps, you see how it is all interconnected, it's all knitted, so that's how it is. So virtual reality, it brings that closer look into that kind of uh, vision of knowing the anatomy aspects, even the microscopic micron level. So that's why I feel like the, we are complementing the conventional or traditional learning here. So, so having said that, so we, started looking at various anatomy commercial softwares, virtual reality softwares, and then we come up with the uh, 3D organon is uh, one of the uh, virtual reality um, anatomy software. We, we tested various uh, softwares and we picked this because um, we looked upon the content, we looked upon the how depth they have covered, and we looked how it is easy to navigate because and also it is user friendliness in terms of the key functions, because this is very key important, which I feel like, because that would reduce the cognitive overload, not to aware of like how to use it, knowing the tools, key functions. So this is what straightforward, pretty easy. And uh, I also looked upon the uh, how much interaction content they got in that software and how much detail and accuracy in all that components. I feel that 3D organ that fits for what we need. And we picked that and we evaluated that and we introduced to students. We did a number of pilot studies. After that, we uh, introduced to the third year medical students. So these third year students have finished first and second year in learning anatomy and they come back to the third year just for a revision. So when uh, we they get experienced with the VR and uh, just we got to know like how they experienced it. They said it is engaging, exciting, motivating, interactive and increased curiosity as you see all the pink or purple shaded line or more positively inclined. And moving further, when we asked, would that facilitate in learning in anatomy through VR and the students, as you see from the yellow and the blue bit, so they agree mostly 
they seems like feeling that it's facilitating. And the moreover, this is the most challenging bit, bit and they agree that it helps to spatial orient the structures within the human body. Moving on, when I ask where they want they to get integrated with the uh, teaching curriculum, whether they want it before or after the donor uh, practical sessions. So they never mind it because because they finished the learning in first year and second year, this is the third year students. So they don't mind whether it is before or after. But when they ask like how they wanted to get integrated, whether they wanted to do self-directed learning or they need an instructor led and whether they need a combined one. So most of the students, they prefer the combined one. It means that we need the tutors who should be trained with using this VR and the tools and application along with the uh, what we learn. As anatomist, I'm, I mean, uh, back in like 10 years back, when I learned anatomy, uh, I relied only on the textbooks. Now we have these kind of uh, tools and I should adapt myself to learn these tools along with this learning technology. That's why I'm here to know what you got in here, how I can take it to my students. So based on that, I got this kind of uh, uh, data. And when I asked the first year students, sorry, and where they want to get integrated with this teaching curriculum, for example, this particular feedback, so they, this particular feedback shows that students may want this kind of a session like tailored to the difficult topics, not on entire session. So just if they feel like some specific topics are difficult, yes, they want that. And uh, definitely they need a tutor. So it can't run in a, a lone session. So we need a, a tutor. And what else they can suggest is that maybe the VR session that could run alongside the practical session or maybe a VR as a revision or review tool to consolidate everything. Okay, so th those were the kind of a feedback we got it from uh, first year medical students. So how I have approached these uh, VR sessions during the last academic year is that um, it I opened a small group teaching sessions because the large group due to, a, uh, because we have a, a number of headsets that could easily cover the small group and I have, I, it could bring more of interactions. So we had a small group teaching and I opened up a voluntary booking sessions in the canvas. So where the students can book in their own time, their preferable time when they want to be and they booked in. And I also provided the practicals uh, alongside the practical. I also opened the VR sessions for them. And, and especially with the students with the uh, support plan. So I looked up on the support plan. So now I'll see whether the students who have any disability challenges, like for example, those who have anxiety, the students approached me and saying that they can't get into the lab on the first day. And we, I got the VR stimulation with before they get into the lab. So get accustomed to the environment, uh, VR environment first, and then to the actual environment. And there were students who had a, a uh, hearing and the uh, difficulties who wanted to uh, have the access to their uh, materials. So we had a support from the uh, immersive uh, through the VR. So the student looking at tailored to that SSP plan, so we can accommodate this immersive to their students, tailored to the students need. So the, what are the future strategies is that coming up in following term, uh, following year is we have plan to fully flat, full fledged in action to bring uh, expand it in a large scale and uh, outreach to get more funding. That's, a, that's one of the challenge bit. And the, the other challenge bit is the time because we had run eight week of block. So we can't run a separate VR sessions. So uh, we have to find a different strategy to blend along with the practical session, or maybe depends on, uh, depends on the student's preferences. Okay, I, the, the students prefer that I want digitally supported throughout this my uh, learning. So we could arrange like that. So why we need to equip them? Because as we know, when the students embark in the clinical journey, uh, now students have get exposure to the stimulations like patient interaction stimulation, surgical stimulation. Now this is an early exposure for them so they can get equipped before they embark in the uh, clinical part. So these are the strategies we adopted. That's the the future part. So and, and the last slide is that basically uh, the university now has recognized that uh, we need to uh, to invest 
in this, so we've uh, received funding from uh, the university that have been spread over three years uh, to build the competencies, competency centers on uh, immersive technology. There are different type of uh, centers already existing, for example, on cyber security automations. This is kind of a place where you can go and ask for help, support, advice, and maybe small grants. So we have a big funding now that we can support immersive technology. Uh, just for example, people <laughs> like uh, actually, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy to take questions. Yes. How much do you think that there's a novelty factor still beyond VR, or do you feel that it's start to shift into mainstream? I think I think it start to be the fact that I mean my, my own personal view the fact that the university is investing in immersive tech now uh, is kind of be become more mainstream it's less it's less uh, uh, challenging than AI for example you know like you know there's lots of issues with AI at the moment but it seems to be more you know we've been trying either for five six years already so it seems to be more uh, settled. So I was interested in the, the results that you were showing about kind of the student reactions to it. Um, I'm just uh, two for that. But look, I had one, two data with this That's one. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, is this their first encounter with VR? Yeah, first time experience with the VR. Right. In any context. In any context. That was the first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was not tailored to any specific topic, just their overall experience, how they felt. Yes. And now we are tailoring to specific topics in next academic year. Yeah, where they've been the students find it difficult saying that I feel like knowing anatomy of eye is difficult. Definitely movements of eye, knowing that movements is difficult. So these kind of softwares would help. Yeah. Do you have plans to push the stress your problem like, whether it has measurable impact on student success? Because I think. Yeah, I find it motivating, I find it interesting, it increases my curiosity. Do you think that will play out? In um, that's a good question. So uh, looking upon a um, few of our medical, I mean, uh, uh, articles. So there are studies, they said like VR enhances, the, I mean, the learning through cadaver is, is not that kind of giving a more success rate, something like that. But we are not looking into that. We are just giving a supplementing that. So students can pick the thing like, I prefer this VR for my learning. Uh, okay, students prefer any 3D anatomy software, they can pick that. So we are gonna give like a, a choices for them to choose. Yes. Yep, I think that's all for this. Thank you. Thank you.